Well, it's been a long time since we brought you viewers over to Bixby, Oklahoma, just south of Tulsa, to OSU's Vegetable Research Station. And here with me today is Bruce Boston, Station Superintendent, and there's a lot we want to show you about some research that's going on there. And Bruce, first, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the station and, and what its purpose is? This station was established back in the 1940s and over the years have looked at a lot of new varieties and new production methods that apply to farm production and, and agriculture in Oklahoma. Okay, and um, right now we're standing in the middle of a big pepper patch and they look gorgeous for this time of the year. Here we are mid-September, they're beautiful green, no pest problems showing up, and it must be the drip irrigation that you're using. Certainly helps keep the plants in, a, in good condition to be able to supply a steady out of water. The spring we were wet and cool, thought uh, peppers would do well early. They've been slow because of the weather, but now we've picked a lot of peppers. We have a lot of things that are in good condition, and um, you're, you're right, the, the water is certainly a big factor in that. Well, another, I know another unique thing about this research station is, is the soils that we have here. We're in the Arkansas River bottom, and and they're nice deep soils. It, it, can you tell us a little bit about what makes them so unique? Be, being well drained is uh, an asset that is uh, overlooked and uh, certainly important to be able to have the soil that will warm up and, and dry out to where you can get things planted when you need to, uh, do cultivations and other procedures in a timely manner. Uh, this soil is so uniform and, and fertile uh, over the whole area that it helps us make good observations as opposed to soils that uh, have more variation right. and are, are more difficult to work. Well I know over the years Bixby's become known as the garden spot of Oklahoma so it's certainly appropriate that we have a vegetable research station here and in the middle of all this is uh, looks like a variety trial for peppers. What's going on right here? The bell peppers have mostly been picked. We've had uh -huh. such extreme heat lately that uh, they're not setting fruit now. Uh, the plants are still in good shape, but we've harvested most of their production. Mm -hmm. But a number of the other peppers are still setting and have a lot of peppers that were set later that are in good condition now. The and kind of thing we would like to have seen at field day, but uh, well, now we can just, see it. It's just a little later. <laughs> okay. This well, what is the purpose of this? Because you have all kinds of peppers that we're going to take a look at in just a minute. But is the idea to sh give farmers an idea of what performs well here? Certainly, yes. The, yeah. the recommendations through the Extension Service um, can can look at size and earliness and productivity of the various bell peppers like these. Mm -hmm. But the other peppers that uh, are of use and value to, to people that like hot peppers uh, might grow for processing or, or other sales. A number of different types of peppers have uh, opportunities to be grown by individuals uh, large or small scale. Okay, great. Well, we've picked a bunch for you, and let's go on over, go on over to the table and kind of show viewers what we have. Well, Bruce, I think we've got a, a pretty good lineup here for the viewers. Uh, we tried to line these up on the table from order of uh, sweet peppers all the way over to hot peppers. So let's run through these. Now, these bells here are beautiful, and that's typically what most people see is a green bell pepper, and, and those are the ones that have the very high vitamin C levels that you hear about in nutritional articles and in magazines and so forth. But what about these yellow ones? Now, what variety is this? This is Admiral. It's one of the varieties that turns yellow instead of red when it matures. It's uh, certainly in demand by people that have an attraction to this different color. Oh, yes. Uh, but like you say, with uh, the production, if you wait longer for, to get this yellow color, there's extra risk and extra expense by the time it gets to the consumer. But it's, it might be a sweeter pepper by having stayed on the plant sure. and, and developed full sweetness. Well, that's certainly why you have to pay more for them if you go to the grocery store. Good reason to grow them in your garden. Well, here's one that's a, a sweet cherry type. Now, I ate one of these a few minutes ago, and although it looked like it'd be a hot pepper, it's just sweet and delicious and uh, very heavy yielding on the vine. And how would these be used by people, though, Bruce? People might process them, chop them, dice them, can them, okay. any, any number of things. And there are hot ones as well as the sweet ones, so you should 
if you're ordering seed or, or buying from someone else, be sure you're getting what you want. Make sure it says sweet cherry and because yes. there are some hot cherry types. Down here we have papri ace, and I guess that's a type of paprika pepper. And um, people who grow those in the garden, I, I guess, could eat them as a sweet, but how are they used in the agricultural industry? When we buy paprika, it's just a dried ground paprika pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, there's produ some production in Oklahoma as well as other places, but the, the color is the main thing. And, and for processing, it can be extracted and added to other foods that we want a, a bright, pretty red color from a natural product. Okay, great. Well, these are real impressive. If y'all have ever made chili relleno, where you roast the chili peppers, put cheese in them, and they're just tasty. Uh, there are two varieties here, uh, Big Jim New Mex, and then uh, Spanish Spice. And this one is a whopper. Um, has that one yielded pretty well here in Oklahoma, Bruce? It certainly has. There are some people that have begun trying it in the last few years, very happy with Spanish spice. The size and production uh, has really surprised people, and, and it's a sweet pepper. Right. It, it, even though the name would tend to make you think it should be spicy, uh -huh. it's the stuffings, it's the other material that uh, give us the flavor we're looking for, uh, the, the spiciness. Right. Yeah. Now back here's an unusual one that y'all might not have seen. Bulgarian carrot. Um, now is this a, a pretty warm one, Bruce? It has a, a good amount of heat if someone's talking about eating peppers uh -huh. or, or other fresh uses, chopped fresh, added to foods. Okay. Um, it uh, would be somewhat comparable to the jalapenos. Okay. Heat. Well, these jalapenos here, we've got a kind of a range of color, and this is a fully mature one with the little cracks along the sides. And the green one is, is what you might see if you've got some green jalapenos scattered over some southwestern food. But uh, what about these yellow ones? Now, I'm not seeing a yellow jalapeno, Bruce. Halora is the name of this variety. Mm -hmm. It's the only one I'm aware of, but there may be others. Uh, it has a moderate level of heat among the jalapenos. There are hotter, there are larger, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a, an interesting color for people that have that uh, interest. That's great. Well, going on to the hotness, and we might for just a second here mention that there actually is a digital or, or numeric scale for the heat of peppers called the Scoville scale, and I guess that goes from what, zero to? Several hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. As, okay. as we get to the hottest peppers, if you test individual peppers, you get up to five and six hundred thousand uh, Scoville units. Mm -hmm. uh, with with our levels in between, we'll have seasonal variations. We have geographical variations. Typically, the eastern part of the state where we have more rain, we don't have quite the heat that we have in the drier areas. Well, that's but as interesting. the temperature and other weather conditions change, you can't count on that every year. Okay, but typically if you grew a, a jalapeno in, say, Hugo, and then grew another one in Boy City, the, uh, the one in Boy City might be hotter? We've seen some indications from some of the peppers that, that that has happened more than once. That's interesting. Okay, well here's getting a little hotter now. We've got uh, long, thin cayenne, and you know, that just looks hot. And true to form, they are too hot for most people to be interested in eating straight. Um, but there's, there are people that want the hottest thing they can find. Okay, and if you, if you bought cayenne pepper in the store, you just need a pinch of this if you're making this a is mild true. chili. A little bit would go a long way, so it has its value in concentration. Okay, then here's some Serrano types back here. And again, uh, about comparable heat to the cayenne. They're, they're both similar. going to be very hot. And, okay. Uh, too hot for most people to, to want to eat. Sure. And these little bitty ones look a little bit sinister too. This is uh, Thai hot and I uh, want people to realize that, that peppers are used the world over, not just in uh, southwestern cooking. And, and these are favored by people for Asian dishes and they are extremely hot. And then last of all, now these are the hottest ones you can get, right? Just Habanero about. Habanero is generally considered the, the highest level of heat. It's not an easy pepper to grow. It's mm -hmm. not well adapted to Oklahoma. Oh. But people that have a real interest, uh, this, is, this is the measure of re whether they really want heat and whether they're really willing to accept some trade-offs because it's not generally as productive. And the, the peppers don't keep well. They're they're fleshy. Okay. They they will mold if they're not picked and harvested when they're when they're ripe. So they're but really meant for a very dry climate, then I guess. The, they're uh, in fact raised in the Caribbean as a perennial, 
oh. this, this type plant can be raised down there year round. Mm -hmm. But uh, the weather conditions are, are certainly different and uh, the, the pepper itself can be added to, to food if you want a lot of heat but you should certainly be careful of it. Yeah, and we want to emphasize that to you viewers, that if you are harvesting the really hot ones, I'd say from jalapeno on up, uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to what, put on some disposable gloves? If you don't break the pepper, the heat is inside. Mm -hmm. But the better part of caution is, if you didn't realize the pepper was broken and you got some on your fingertips and then rubbed your eyes, you know, sensitive areas would react very, very painfully mm -hmm. to this heat. So if you wear the gloves, then you it's a warning not to rub your eyes. Right, and, and, uh, and that is an, an oil-based type heat. So if you are, uh, if you eat them and decide this is not for you, and it's just too hot, what do you think is one of the best things to take, Bruce? If you eat a pepper, it's just too hot, your mouth is on fire, and you want to cool it down. There's various home remedies that, that may help. That being an oil, the oily materials, uh, people say uh, that uh, margarine or buttermilk or something like this would dilute it better than water. Water Certainly. will cool the surface. Right, but, but you want a, an oil to dissolve an oil. To help remove and dilute that, that heat. So. Uh, okay. Well, there's certainly an, a lot of interest in peppers, so much so that you even see peppers used in office decor now. And this is a poster that you might have seen around different places that sell graphic designs and so forth, and it's, it's called the Great Chili Poster, and they seem to be so much a part of our mainstream culture that we even decorate with peppers. You'll see pepper ristras hanging outside of people's homes, pepper jewelry, and uh, this one, incidentally, hangs in the Tulsa County OSU Extension Office. And although people come in for our fact sheets, it's just amazing how they'll stop and look at that, and they'll look at the little heat unit scale down at the bottom, and it will help them make a decision on um, what kind of peppers they want to put in their gardens. So this is real interesting, and keep in mind that peppers are easy to grow. Even though we're going into the tail end of the year, you're probably starting to get some seed catalogs, or at least you will be in the next month or two. Think about what we've gone over today and make your plans to put some peppers in your garden next year. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.